Hey, this is Marissa from Atio, and this video is an introduction to workflows. Workflows let you automate your go-to-market tasks and processes in Atio, as well as other tools in your go-to-market stack. This can be anything from simple Slack messages to researching and routing your leads. You can build fully automated workflows to help your team get their day-to-day -day tasks done more quickly and reliably. We'll start with a simple example that highlights some of the core concepts of the workflow builder, and then we'll move on to a more advanced example at the end. The workflow tool has two key components. On the left, you have the canvas, where you will define the blocks and the paths between the blocks. And on the right hand side, you have the editor, where you can manage each of these blocks. In this overview, we're going to cover four of the most popular types of blocks in Atio. You've got trigger blocks, logic blocks, action blocks, and integration blocks. Every workflow in Atio starts with a trigger, which determines the conditions in which the workflow is kicked off. In this particular example, we're creating a workflow to help new customers transition from sales to onboarding, and this is done whenever a deal is moved to closed one. So we're using the record updated block as a trigger, and we've selected the deals object and the deal stage attribute so that this workflow will be triggered any time a deal record has its stage updated. Other types of triggers include record commands, which allow you to manually kick off the workflow, created and updated triggers for both lists and records, and then the task trigger as well, which is any time a task is created. There are also utility and integration triggers, which help with some more advanced workflows. The second type of block in Atio are logic blocks, and these are used to control the flow and the path of the workflow. In this case, we're using a filter, which is the simplest logic block, and it determines whether or not a workflow will continue based on some set criteria. I said earlier that I want this workflow to run when a deal is moved into one, but it's actually being triggered when a deal is moved into any stage. So we want to use a filter block to check that the new stage is one. You can see in the inputs that we have filter criteria for this block, which uses variables. This is an important concept in workflows. We've selected the variable that we want to base this filter on, which is the new value of the stage. In this case, we only want the workflow to continue when that stage is one. So I'm going to do new value is one. So now this workflow will only continue from this point onwards when a deal is moved into the one stage. For any other deal stage, the workflow will stop here. There are other examples of logic blocks that you can choose from in Atio. First up, you have the if else block, which will give you two paths that your workflow can follow. And you also have a switch block, which has a flexible number of paths to determine which set of blocks to continue on with, depending on multiple different groups or filter criteria. The next type of block is an action block, which takes action or performs some sort of step within Atio. In this example, any time a deal is won, we want to add the associated company into a list that our customer success team manages for onboarding new customers. So we're using the add record to list action block. For this particular block's inputs, we're selecting the list that we want to add the record to, which is the customer success list. Then selecting the record variable from the previous step that we want to add to the list. So in this case, we want to use the company that's associated with the deal we're also populating a handful of attributes that exist in a customer success list, such as customer lifecycle stage and onboarding stage, and for this we're just using fixed values. Other action blocks that are available in Atio include creating a new record, updating existing records, finding records, and then doing the same for lists. We also have action blocks for tasks. The last block that we're going to review in this quick overview are integration blocks. In addition to taking action in Atio, workflows can also take action in downstream systems like other SaaS applications that your company uses. We're going to post a message on Slack to congratulate the team on the deal that was just won. We've already set up the integration between Atio and Slack, which you can do in your account settings. For the inputs on this block, we're simply selecting the workspace that we want to use and then the channel that we want to send the message to. And then we're defining the message that we want to send on the Slack channel. We can use variables to insert attributes from prior steps into these inputs. Variables will be displayed in the reverse order of which they came from. So the latest block will be listed first and the first block will be listed last. You can also see here how many blocks prior this specific variable came from. I'm going to click here to insert a variable into the text input box and then navigate to the particular variable that I want to use. So we are going to the record that was updated in the first block, which is the deal that was moved to close one. And I'm going to select the associated company's name. We're also going to add in the contract value of the deal. So let's see that workflow in action. I'm going to move this deal to one. 
If I go back to the workflow itself, I can have a look at the runs, which will show the workflow moving through the different blocks in live time. And you can also use this retrospectively. Now let's head over to Slack and you can see I have had the announcement message come through. And then finally, I'll go back to Atio to check our customer success list where that new customer has been added. So these are the four steps of our workflow here. A trigger to define when to kick it off, a logic block to define whether the path continues, an action block to take action within Atio, and an integration block to take action in downstream systems. Now that we've covered the basics of the automations tool, let's take a look at a more complex workflow using some more advanced blocks. Here we have a workflow for a PLG company whose customers can manage their subscriptions directly in the product. This workflow was built to alert internal teams and trigger customer success processes to help support and retain customers who've upgraded, downgraded, or canceled their plan. Atio's integration with Segment is used to track app configuration and usage data in Atio users and workspace objects. This workflow is triggered when the MRR attribute in a workspace record is updated. To calculate the size and the direction of the MRR change, we're using a formula block. This block allows you to perform mathematical operations on variables from prior blocks. In this example, we are subtracting the previous value from the new value. We're then filtering to check that the result of the formula is not zero, so there has either been an increase or a decrease in the MRR. A switch block operates similarly to the filter block that we saw earlier, but it allows the workflow to follow different paths depending on which conditions are met. So here we have three conditions, which means there are three possible paths. The first condition is that the result is greater than zero, meaning that the customer increased the subscription. The second uses an advanced filter. Advanced filters in Atio let you build complex combinations of filter values using ands, ors, and by grouping filters together. Here we're using a simple and. If the subscription change calculated in the formula block is less than zero and the workspace is still active, the customer has downgraded their account. The third and the final condition is that the workspace status is cancelled. Once we've established these three paths in our workflow, representing subscription increases, decreases and cancellations, we can add workflow blocks into each path to take the appropriate actions for each situation. Anytime a user increases their subscription, Atio will post a message of the new MRR to a specified Slack channel, and it will also send an HTTP post request to a downstream system. In this case, it's Intercom, and we'll be updating the MRR so that the support team have the correct information when speaking to that customer. For subscription decreases, Atio will create a task and assign it to the relevant account manager, prompting them to reach out and find out the cause of the downgrade and offer help to make sure the customer is getting the most out of their subscription. We've used an adjust time block here, and this is taking the time that the workflow was triggered, so when the attribute was first updated, and offsetting this by two days. The reason for this is that we can now use this offset time as the due date for the task. When customers cancel their subscription, we ask them for product feedback during the cancellation process. In the workflow path for cancellations, we take that free text response and we categorize it using Atio's classify AI block. Updating the workspace cancellation reason attribute with these tags helps the product team to understand the most common reasons for churn. So that's an overview of Atio's automation tool. Workflows allow you to automate manual tasks and processes to increase efficiency and consistency across all stages of your customer lifecycle. We also have a library of templates available for some of the most common use cases across different industries, so be sure to check those out.